Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of Feb 2024. How are you doing everyone? How is your year so far? I hope it's off to a good start for you. I'm here in Sydney, Australia. It's a very hot day today. It's about 30 degrees. We've got this breeze blowing. So I've just kind of moved the camera because I don't have one of those muff things to put on top of my microphone. I've got backup audio though. I think we should be okay. So it's a windy day. It's a very hot day, 30 degrees down here in the Southern Hemisphere. You will hear the occasional sounds of galahs. They are beautiful pink birds and they're super cute. I'll put a picture on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. Galahs are really, really cute and they're everywhere. So they are being quite noisy today. You'll hear them in the background. And yeah, really, really hot day, as I mentioned. And here we've been having up and down weather. So we'll have a day like this, which is 30, to 30 degrees. And then we'll have, you know, a day like tomorrow, which is going to be overcast and 23 and quite a bit cooler. So it's pretty up and down. You can hear the birds. I hope I've come at a good time where they're not going to have any fights. Sometimes the cockatoos will have huge fights and brawls uh, and they can be very very loud so fingers crossed you'll be able to hear me today anyway let's take a look at the news in brief by the way I hope you're doing well wherever you are I also want to welcome all the new subscribers thank you so much for joining and we're going to take a look at what is coming up in the month of February I also wanted to do a news matchup of what's been happening lately there has been a little bit of news I've got something to match up um, and that is that on the 11th and 12th of January there were two days of public hearings in the International Court of Justice where South Africa's case against Israel was being heard and I watched the incredible um, Irish lawyer I'm going to speak about her in a moment but uh, I watched her, I think it was about a half hour speech she gave. I did watch that. Now, South Africa versus Israel, the case is all about the cessation and prevention of genocide in the Gaza Strip. And yes, it is a genocide. It's not a war. There are just innocent people being killed. This really, really, really has to stop. So I had a look at the 11th and 12th of January just to see what was going on astrologically. And on both of these, these days, we had some interesting astrology that I think contributed to a movement where, you know, this is a positive movement, I believe, South Africa versus Israel, uh, you know, taking them to the ICJ there. I think this is definitely positive and the humanitarian forces are working. So where are those humanitarian forces in the sky? Well, I'm seeing Mars in Sagittarius and I'm also seeing Sun in Sagittarius as being good, strong powers that helped on these two days. We also, of course, have Saturn in Aquarius. And those of you who watched my Saturn in Aquarius video, I'll link it above. You'll remember that there I talked about the fact that the spotlight will be on the people and it is on the people and there's so much awakening going on so many people are waking up to the truth and i'm pretty sure that even just recently we've had huge marches in london people have been marching for justice for palestine it's been really incredible that's of course saturn in aquarius uh, you'll see Saturnian energy working through a guy called Norman Finkelstein. I'm pretty sure I've got his name right. Oh, sorry, I was just checking that I wasn't being eaten by anything. This is Australia. I get eaten a lot <laughs> out here. I'm not being eaten. Uh, yeah, Norman Finkelstein. You'll want to take a look at his chart. I had a look uh, at, at his chart. I was able to find his chart. And if you're wanting to study up on this situation and learn more about it and what's going on, he's the guy that you've got to go to. And my mum has watched just about every video he's done. And with her, I've watched a handful of videos myself. And he's really incredible. His knowledge is phenomenal. And interestingly, he's a Sagittarius moon. He has come out of his Sarisati period and he is being rewarded. He has an exalted Saturn. Now exalted Saturn, when I 
uh, eventually I'm, so, I'm putting together all my archetypes uh, I'm now actually writing all of that into a book so stay tuned I'll give you updates as to how I'm doing but there I've said it on the video I have to commit it has to be done now it's probably gonna take me about a year a year and a half I am starting to put it together I've written a couple of pages but the reason I went down the book tangent was just to tell you that I'm putting together these archetypes and you know when we're looking ar archetypally the judge sat and exalted that is the judge archetype and that's the karmic accountant that is that is the judge who knows who can assess who can weigh things up who can weigh up and say who's telling the truth who's not telling the truth what's really going on here you know the judge who's gone through all the history and Norman Finkelstein is that kind of guy he's got an exalted Saturn and Saturn in Aquarius is a good energy for him uh, and it you know this Saturn in Aquarius phase when you look at his chart him being a, a Sag Moon, he's in a reward phase and he is being rewarded. He now has some fame. He And I think his fame is going to continue massively over the next 20 years because I'm pretty sure he's at the beginning of his Saturn Mahadasha as well. So there's someone, that, you know, there's an energy, Saturn in Aquarius. If you watched, as I say, my Saturn in Aquarius video, you know that I talked about uh, that the power will go to the people, the spotlight will be on the people, justice will be a thing, justice will start to be restored in our world. We've got, you know, Jupiter moving away from its debilitation place in Capricorn. So I think we're going to have, you know, it's, it's a slow burn. We've still got Pluto in Capricorn. So for 20 years, there's still going to be upheaval on the world stage. Some of it will be dark. Some of it will be unpleasant and difficult. And that is going to keep going. So, you know, I am seeing that look, there are there are dark forces. And of course, we could look at this shadow aspect of Saturn and Aquarius, of Mars and Sagittarius, uh, Mars and Sagittarius and Sun and Sagittarius. There are shadow aspects of those as well. But basically, I, I, you know, when we look at, what's positive and, and what's happening in our favor. Uh, I do think, um, yeah, I've got here, I'm looking at the light attributes of these three energies. So that's Mars in Sag, Sun in Sag, and Saturn in Aquarius. I've got here, I'm seeing that the good forces really were strong here on the 11th and 12th of Jan. Sun in Sagittarius, uh, from what I've seen, and again, looking at that archetypally, that's a bit of, you know, the voice of God. So when you listen, to the South African lawyer, her speech, which is really incredible. It's a little bit like there's some divinity working through her, moving through her, and I'll put her name and face on the screen as well so you, you'll be able to see her. I looked her up and I tried to find birth details. I couldn't find them. So if anyone can find her birth date, just by any chance, I don't expect that we would find her time of birth. Um, I think that's a bit of a long shot, but to find her date of birth is possible if anyone happens to be able to find that. Now her, her name is a beautiful Irish name. I'm going to have a go at pronouncing it. I've got here Blenna Nahal, Nahali, Blenna Nahali Casey. Uh, and yeah, I did try to look up her chart, but she is a, an internet, a humanitarian sort of, um, uh, lawyer you know rights and all that kind of human rights lawyer I think that's what they're called isn't it so I'm definitely guessing she will have some strong Aquarian energy um, if we bring back the chart of someone like Norman Finkelstein now I'm doing this from memory I'm trying to remember what I saw a few days ago but I'm pretty sure exalted Saturn he has which is great for a judge but another good thing that he's got which is great for a lawyer is um, Mars in Virgo and when we're looking at the chart of a lawyer for example so if we were to look at uh, Blenna Nahali's chart we would see strong Virgo or strong sixth house we would see strong and it could be um, strong Libra or strong uh, seventh house also Sagittarius could feature but definitely the collective energies Capricorn Aquarius as well could be really strong players in a chart like hers well let's take a look at the energy for Feb that's the only news matchup item I have it was just the um, South Africa versus Israel and that's it let's take a look at the energy for Feb what do we have coming up this month well we have Mars exalted 
this is huge guys now I'm gonna cover this individually for all of you so you will get to find out how this will operate for you personally I think individually this is great energy but collectively this could be very severe this could be intense so any war slash uh, genocide type situations in the world they could be exacerbated at this time um, I would say that days to be cautious of, I've got here 13th Feb, could be a day for caution. We've got Mars and Pluto conjunct and we've got 21 or 22nd Feb or the couple of days around these dates. Feb, um, I've got here Mars and Venus are conjunct, 21 Feb and 22 Feb. So these are dates just to take care, precaution, but Mars Exalted is really, really good. It's a really powerful, beautiful energy. I'm not worried by it, but I mean, we've got, we've got Pluto in the house, which is the thing that worries me a little bit. And when Mars and Venus get together, I have seen when I was following the Ukraine situation, I did see that things exacerbated when Mars and Venus were walking the night sky together. So, yeah let's take a look at mid-month onwards i've got here mid-month onwards we have the sun and mercury joining saturn in aquarius now individually and collectively this is great energy uh i like this energy this is this is strong energy for consulting analysis strategizing creating long-term plans being a visionary seeing far into the future when these three get together you can yeah you've got some visionary power here it's it's pretty cool i've also got here this is great energy to remain strong and stand your ground as well excellent for humanitarian causes and work but if there's something where you need to be really firm and stand your ground this is this is strong energy for that so that's mid-month onwards and don't forget guys we're in an eight year so that's a slow burn of energy that converts into big results over time so that is the energy that we're working with this year all right well we are gonna dive straight into the mini reports i'm just checking the time I think we're okay I sort of want to film with I've got this other camera guys and I'm tempted just having a look and also I've got the Sun right in my face here I'm tempted to look at this look at this is a camera can you believe it isn't that just incredible and I'm tempted to whip this out and film on this but I'm now also thinking this is working well I'm just gonna keep this going I might film on this. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use this for shorts. So stay tuned on the channel. I also want to do sort of walk and talk style videos. So that this is what I'll be using. And I won't use it today. I think I'll put it back in and I'll just keep going with what we have here. Because this works. And yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. So also, do I want to get out of this direct sunlight? I feel like I might want to. I think I'm going to get sunburnt. I think we might move the camera a bit. Okay, I think that's better. I just wanted to move somewhere where there's a bit more shade. I'll also sort out my hair. Apologies, everyone. I'm a mess today. We're just kind of hanging out though, here in good old Sydney, Australia. You can hear the birds. There are a lot of birds. Oh, cockatoos. I'll see if I can film some of these. I might use my little DJI Osmo camera to film some of these birds. How about that because I'd love to show you all right let's get into it Aries how you doing Aries Aries welcome so this is Aries ascendant Aries moon or Aries Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so now Aries from 5 Feb to 15th March it's quite a long transit we've got here Mars is going to be exalted in your 10th house and I've got here, this is an absolutely powerhouse position for you. Okay, this is a great time to be productive, a great time to get a lot done. Don't worry if it's slow going. We're in an eight year. So this is that kind of year where you just want to chip away a little bit each day. 
Now mid-month onwards we've got Saturn, Sun and Mercury in Aquarius in your 11th house. Think long term about how you bring in new opportunities and in order to help you do that. So part of this is dreaming, part of this is visualizing, planning the future, strategizing. In order to do this effectively, I've got here, put your plans on paper as a form of pressure release. Isn't that interesting? So what I've found and I have been finding is that I'm putting some of my goals and dreams and what I wanna do on paper. And it's not like, because sometimes with goal setting, yeah, I'm not so into goal setting and a lot of coach types uh, have experimented with goals and all this kind of thing and found that it's not the best way. And But to put some sort of long-term loose goals on paper as a form of pressure release from your system, that way you don't have to keep carrying it within. You've put it on paper and you can just tackle the little bit chunks at a time and th that's the other important thing yes write down your goals but see can you break them down can you chunk them up can you make the steps to get there smaller and that will be you know you'll discover sub goals as you go and things that you really want to achieve this year that will help you achieve the big thing that you know you're capable of doing in five years so what do you what do you need to do this year that would be good but this is the kind of energy with Saturn Sun and Mercury in Aquarius where you can you can really look a few years ahead kind of thing look that far ahead and write down the sub goals as a form of pressure release so they're out of your system they're on paper you don't have to think about it you don't have to worry about it gosh it is windy today well that's what it is <laughs> all right let's have a look what else have we got here Aries so 9th Feb we've got a new moon in Capricorn the Nishta Nakshatra in your 10th house so Mars is exalted here as well with this new moon it's pretty incredible I've got here if you need to start something new this is the day to do it act on this day action right and especially towards something that is career or work related because it's a new moon you can also wish for things as well and we've got here Capricorn Danish and Nakshatra you can wish for wealth you can wish for career um, you know that that the next steps be shown to you or that things materialize faster you can wish for acceleration on your career as well that could be a really good thing to wish for here actually the energy is very strong for that now on the 24th of Feb we have a full moon in Leo Maga Nakshatra in your fifth house so this is a full moon happening opposite that consulting sort of combination that I've mentioned of Saturn Sun and Mercury right so on this day you might get some visibility about where you are headed in the future you might get some ideas downloads visions guidance come through it could be a really amazing day actually so if you are a person who journals or you keep a diary this could be one to make note of in your diary this could be a good day to be particularly mindful of what ideas and inspirations are coming to you at this time because it's like the, there's something about future you'll see the future a little bit with this full moon it's pretty incredible because we've got the full moon lauded by the Sun and Sun and moon when they're together that is you know it's a new moon uh, and that's visionary capability right there you can you know, people such people get ideas they get downloads they're very inspired people as well but I've got here 24th Feb full moon see if you can feel what's ahead for you on your trajectory you might get some strong indications Aries it is looking like a pretty good month for you I'm wishing you well and we are now going to welcome Taurus Taurus welcome thank you so much for joining so this is a Taurus ascendant Taurus moon or Taurus sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology I'm just realizing Taurus that I think it is very windy and I want to move the camera again because I don't want the audio let's try this 
after we try this because the wind is going in this direction now. Oh, this might be better. <laughs> That's interesting, Taurus. We have a change of direction here for you. You're changing direction. Is that something that's going on? I hope the audio is better so that then I don't have to. I mean, I've got backup audio with the phone here. We'll see if I need it. I don't know. But let's take a look at this. All right, so some of you might be experiencing a change of direction, which is quite interesting. Uh, now, from 5th Feb to 15th March, we've got Mars exalted in your ninth house. So this is fiery Mars in your fiery ninth house. This is a great time to be seen for your work, to be seen for what you do in the world. Now I've got here, temper your ambition a little bit. This might be very exciting. You might be like, oh good. You know, I need a stretch of, you know, strong energy, uh, Taurus. You might not have had this for a while, but I've got here, temper your ambition, temper your drive, as you could run into conflict with authority. Okay, so just, you might be really feeling like, yeah, I want to go for it, but just, you know, don't, don't go too hard, too much kind of thing uh, with this energy. Now, mid-month onwards, we've got Saturn, Sun and Mercury in Aquarius in your 10th house. This is great long-term visionary energy where you can productively visualize the next few years ahead. And this is definitely in terms of career, but this is also things like well, it is. Yeah, I was going to say, because I was thinking, I was just looking at your ninth house there. No, this is 10th house. This is definitely career for you. The other thing is with career. Yeah, again, you might be seen because sun moving through the 10th is a thing of prominence. We do have Saturn in your 10th, though, that is kind of constantly restricting your career. And that could be frustrating for you. But sun and Mars are moving through. So I would say for uh, this year, You've got strong career energy. You know, Feb, March is, is strong for career for you. Even though you've constantly got Saturn in the 10th, sort of restricting your career a little bit. I've got here, yeah, again, this is good visibility for what you do, you're being seen. Now, 9th Feb, we've got a new moon, Capricorn, Danishta Nakshatra, happening in your ninth house. So we've got Mars exalted and in the same house here. This is pretty exciting. So I've got here, you can put action into skilling up. What do you need to learn that's going to help take you to the next level? And for some of you that will be skills, for some of you that will be executive education, for some of you that will even be learning how to rest, learning how to build rest into your day so that you can be more productive as well. I've got here, this is a good time to wish for all the skills and knowledge or you can wish to meet a guru, a teacher, someone that really excites you about your subject area. And, and you know how it is when you find a teacher that you're just like, oh, I'm so excited and oh, I can watch all their videos and oh, yay, you know, like it's like finding a treasure trove sometimes when you find a new teacher or a new YouTube channel or whatever that is. So yeah, this is that kind of energy here. Now on the 24th of Feb, there's a full moon happening in Leo, Marga Nakshatra, and that's in your fourth house. So this is that full moon happening against that consultant combination, that visionary sort of combination. So I've got here, you might have visibility, ideas, and intuitive guidance on where you and or your family should live long term. This is about where you live, it's about how you live, it's about are you comfortable where you are, do you want to change something about where you are, and these are the kind of big long-term projects that, that might need a few years for you to complete. So this is that you're being given energy and time, I think, through this full moon and possibly with that bright full moon there in your fourth house, ideas, there's visibility, you can see more. So there's, you'll get clues about what's coming up uh, when it comes to home life for you. Taurus, it is looking like a good month ahead. I wish you well. We are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon or Gemini Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now from the 5th of Feb to the 15th of March, we have Mars exalted in your 8th house. So yes, Mars is exalted, but the energy could be mixed here. 
It could be a time where shared assets are in focus. Could be a time where something connected with your in-laws are in focus. Um, now this could be, and I'm gonna say it is, a very good time to do some clutter clearing. If you're finding that you've got this spare energy but you, you know, you don't know what to do with it, definitely turn that attention to your stuff and maybe clearing some of the clutter. Now mid-month onwards, we've got Saturn, Sun and Mercury in Aquarius in your ninth house. So you can definitely plan journeys or trips with this energy. If there are places that you wanna go, maybe a workshop you wanna do on the other side of the world, there's a guru or a teacher that you want to meet, there's a time to plan that and make that happen. I know definitely across my Jupiter Mahadasha, I did quite a few um, sort of long journeys where I'd go from, you know, I, re I remember I used to fly, I kind of, so I was living in London and I would fly to Sydney, meet the family, and then I'd go to America and do workshops and that kind of thing. I used to do that, I used to love doing that. So yeah, you can plan some kind of really long thing um, especially a workshop or something like that. Now on the, oh, the other thing about the 9th of Feb, new moon. Oh no, hang on, we're still, we are still with mid-month onwards with Saturn, Sun and Mercury, my apologies. I've got here also, this is great energy for students or looking into further education for yourself in the future. Now your relationship with your father, your siblings, or your cousins could be in focus at this time. Now on the 9th of Feb, we've got a new moon in Capricorn, Danish the Nakshatra in your eighth house. So Mars is exalted here, it's in the same house. So this is a great day for action, and it's definitely a great day for clutter clearing. You want to renew your space. You want to renew your environment, definitely on this day. Take some action towards that. Now you can also wish for something, it's a new moon, so you can wish for a healing for yourself uh, or for your family or your extended family, in-laws, all that kind of thing. Maybe you want a healing within the family system, you know, that's gonna help a lot of you grow. So something like that you could, you could be wishing for. And on the 24th of Feb, we have a full moon in Leo, Martha Nakshatra, happening in your third house. So this is a great time to discuss long-term plans, either with friends or family, or, or for yourself. These, these could be just long-term plans for you. And this is to do with you and your effort, where you put your effort. Um, this is the kind of thing that you're considering on this full moon. So here's the guidance we've got here intuitive guidance, ideas and downloads for goals requiring your effort might come in at this time. Third house is effort. It's effort that you put in with your own life force, with your own hands even. We've got hands here in the third house. So it's like you're always putting effort towards things. Wouldn't you love for that to be easier and for there to be more reward with less effort? You know, it's that kind of thing. So on this full moon, 24th Feb full moon, you might be inspired to work smarter, not harder. You'll get those kind of ideas come in. It's a lovely month ahead for you, Gemini. I'm wishing you well. Take care. And we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. I think we're okay. My hair's a bit of a mess. That's <laughs> it's the wind. I couldn't predict the wind today. I'm predicting everything else, but I don't know which way the wind's blowing. All right, Cancer, what have we got going on? So from the 5th of Feb to the, to the 15th of March, we've got Mars exalted in your seventh house. Now this is great energy if you are on social media. This is great energy if you are self-employed. You know, if you're, you are the one who, you're a bit of a fire starter in your life, you know, you're the one who uh, needs to get things going. This is good energy for you. But if you're married or you're in a partnership, you know, romantic partnership, a committed romantic partnership, this is the seventh house here. I've got here, take care in that relationship. Okay, and that's from, yeah, 5th Feb to 15th March. 
Ooh, I better hold onto the camera. <laughs> I don't want it to fly away. Um, yeah, this is. This could be difficult energy, potentially. So just be mindful, extra mindful in your relationship across this time, and just know that you know if there are certain things you want to you know have go your way kind of thing right in your relationship it might not be so easy across this time all right so it might be you might be letting go of things more than than usual um yeah this is just a time to go easy in partnership and relationship and be mindful take care of how you speak in relationship and just know that there are better transits coming for love from a mars perspective okay now mid-month onwards, we've got Saturn, Sun and Mercury in Aquarius in your eighth house. So this energy, now let's have a look here. Yes, this is in contrast to Gemini, I was just checking that. So this triple conjunction, Saturn, Sun and Mercury in your eighth house, this energy could illuminate the long-term strategies and plans of people around you, especially in-laws, family, partner, you might just be able to sense where things are moving without really even speaking to anyone. And that's good to know. Your intuition will be probably right about that at this time. I've also got here that um, this is good energy to get organized and especially to do your accounts or to get your finances up to date, something along those lines. Now on the 9th of Feb, we have a new moon in Capricorn, Danish to Nakshatra in your seventh house. Mars is exalted in the same house. So it's a great day for action. It's a great day to do something for your business if you're self-employed. Perhaps this is a good day to start a business. You know, seventh house is marketplace. And as I was writing these notes today, I realized, yeah, that this could be a time where you start a business and you create your own marketplace. How about that? I've got here on the 9th of Feb, new moon, you can also wish for a healing in your heart um, for more romantic love to come into your life. Or if you are in a partnership, you're in a relationship, you know, you might want to wish for a healing in that relationship if you need one. And on the 24th of Feb, there is a full moon in Leo Maga Nakshatra in your second house. So you might get insights or ideas about your family of origin. So this is your parents, your siblings, you know, your blood relatives, as opposed to um, your family. Say, for example, you're married with kids, that family. This is not that family. This is your family of origin family. So you might get insights about them. I've got here, it is a good time to discuss long-term plans with your family, if you're able to do so. That's on the 24th of Feb, full moon. Cancer looking like a good month ahead i'm wishing you well take care we are now going to welcome leo leo welcome thank you so much for joining i'm just checking the time i think we're okay so from the 5th of feb to the 15th of march you have mars exalted in your sixth house wow leo this is powerhouse energy i've got here brilliant energy for work you are an absolute unstoppable powerhouse of energy this month this is epic, Leo. Got here, enjoy this whole transit. You are very lucky. You are one of the three very lucky signs. Okay, so if you're feeling the energy to work, if you're feeling inspired, do it, make it happen. Don't second guess yourself. Don't look at the competition. You might want to. I mean, we are dealing with sixth house here, but it's like, this is the kind of energy where you'll be fearless to look at the competition. You know, you'll just be, and there's an announcement. What's that about? I don't know if that's coming up on the audio. That's interesting. There's no events here today. Hmm. There's an announcement. Well, I think I mean, some of you might be, I don't know, experiencing fame. Yeah, because mid-month onwards, this is so interesting. This leads nicely into mid-month onwards. Saturn, Sun and Mercury in Aquarius in your seventh house. So... That could be fame, guys. Wow. I've got here um, long term plans to do with your business if you're self employed or if you have a public, so you're an author or a social media person. Um, 
or this could be like long-term plans and ideas to do with your marriage if you're married married those will become clear you're going to have some visionary thoughts come to you about what it is that you want to do where you want to be I'm just having a look the camera battery is flashing I'm gonna to have to change it my goodness Leo your energy is so powerful it's you know gonna to topple my camera here I'll just let it fall apart and then I'll put the new battery in in a moment all right let's keep going here so wow Leo huge 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 energy and there was that random announcement I really hope it comes up on the audio otherwise you'll think I'm crazy um, but yeah this is great but this is that visionary what you've got happening in your seventh house will give you a vision into what it is that you hi Leo the camera battery ran out but no problem we've got a fresh lovely new battery just for you of course we do we've got exalted Mars here powerhouse energy you've got the fresh battery so look at that I mean if things do conk out if things do go badly if things you know run out of energy you'll have fresh energy you'll be replenished and you know that is a good night's sleep that is what a good night's sleep will do for all of us and I'm kind of realizing that um, yeah you know um, well anyway that's a whole other tangent I'm not going to go down but I was just going to go into this um, I'm reading this book Healing Back Pain again by John E. Sano I'll put it on the screen you guys will be able to check it out basically if anyone has back pain you'll know um, yeah that that can be annoying and anyway but this guy is explaining that a lot of it is to do with our consciousness and the build of our mind and it's so true anyway I was going to go down a whole tangent there but I'm not going to I'm going to come back to the notes here Leo um, but yeah mid-month onwards with the energy in your seventh house you're going to become aware of long-term plans what you really want to do in the next five years or so it's going to become clear to you and I think even sub goals and the steps that you're going to need to take to get there all of that's going to become clear to you as well what I'm saying to everyone is put it on paper get that out of your system and look plans change goals change how we feel changes we grow our dreams change don't worry about it just put stuff on paper so it's out of your system and get on with the next step and especially because you've got this great Mars energy here you especially can just hit the road and keep running that's what that's coming into my head I've got that song hit the road Jack I don't know why but that's coming into my head <laughs> and um, you can get on with it in a big way all right let's take a look at 9th Feb new moon Capricorn Danish and Akshatra happening in your sixth house so Mars is exalted and in the same house with this new moon here there's a great day to start something professional um, or for your work or to start a project or to start something new to get something significant done there's a great day to get organized and to wish for the next steps in career to be shown to you and on the 24th of Feb we have a full moon in Leo Marga Nakshatra in your first house this is your full moon this is all about you Leo so this full moon has the power to give you visibility on long-term plans that are ahead for you you might be able to really tap into your own future here and see it okay you've got visionary energy here I've got here destiny is molding and shaping you and you're gonna get a preview at this time Leo I'm super excited enjoy this month we are now going to welcome Virgo Virgo welcome thank you so much for joining now this is Virgo ascendant Virgo moon or Virgo sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so from the 5th of Feb to the 15th of March we've got Mars exalted in your fifth house now this is great energy for creativity if you have children be soft be gentle with the kids okay this is kind of this is a little bit of commander-in-chief type energy here you might want to run everyone ragged around you uh, but don't do that <laughs> just go easy with everyone else but if you've got energy to burn and put towards your projects go for it I've got here if you run a team you be ambitious you work hard but don't be too driven with this energy don't run everyone into the ground kind of thing now mid-month onwards we've got Saturn Sun and Mercury in Aquarius in your sixth house this is beautiful energy this is powerful energy that can bring more attention your way at work we've got Sun and Mercury moving through that sixth house there 
So you're going to be seen at work or your work is going to become more prominent or more important or people are going to book you more or you're going to be, you know, people are going to interact with you more. Um, I've got here, this is visionary energy that will reveal to you how to compete or how to win. Okay. And this is good strategic energy. This is the kind of energy where it's okay to have a look at competitors and see what they're doing and see what they're up to and even learn from them or be inspired by them. You know, it's okay to do that now and then just see who's doing what. Um, yeah. All right. Let's take a look here. 9th Feb, new moon. We've got Capricorn, Danish Nakshatra, new moon happening in your fifth house. So Mars is exalted here. It's in the same house. You can put something into motion, especially if it's something creative. If there's a creative project or something you've really been wanting to make or try out or do creatively, this could also be something financial. This could be a financial thing where maybe you want to start a new investment scheme or something along those lines. I'm not the person to ask about these things. I don't know anything about that, but this could be you start some, some investment plan at this time because you've got investment you're in the fifth house there you've got that investment type energy running on that line uh, this could be a really fun day with the kids if you've got kids you might want to take them out and have fun and if you're wanting children this could be a time to wish for children um, equally you could wish for because we've got a new moon here you could wish for creative ideas that will generate money for you you could wish for that incredible idea that you know, you get that aha moment. It's like, oh, why don't I just do this? It'll be so easy and, you know, to bring in all this abundance. Now, on the 24th of Feb, we have a full moon in Leo Maga Nakshatra in your 12th house. So you might get some really spiritual ideas and insights that will help you grow and help take you forward in life. This could be a really... Um, inspirational sort of a day for you. You might be inspired. You might get ideas on this day. And also, Virgo, you might just want total rest. Okay, so if this is a full moon where you get to it and you're exhausted and you're tired, take time out, really rest. Um, full moons are very good for recharging. And sometimes, you know, um, especially like with women, I know I've been asked this question before about women and the monthly cycle and syncing up with all these things and that does happen. And if, if you find that you're synced up to that full moon, you might really need uh, some proper rest. So do try and get some. Virgo, I'm wishing you well. Take care. We are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon or Libra Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 5th of Feb to the 15th of March, we've got Mars exalted in your fourth house. So this is not the best energy to move if you're moving, uh, you know, but Mars is exalted. So you might have extra energy. It could be okay. Um, it just might require some good planning, some buffer time, take care of extra expenses. Uh, is, is what could happen if you are moving. Now this energy could leave you feeling a bit restless. So if you feel inspired to take a small trip here or there, um, definitely do so, but please do so safely, okay? Because you've got Mars in that fourth house there. I'm pretty sure Venus is about there as well. Uh, and so driving and things like that, you wanna be safe, okay? Take time and don't rush. Now, mid-month onwards, we've got Saturn, Sun and Mercury in Aquarius in your fifth house. So you can use this energy to think long term about your finances, about investing. You might also get some visionary ideas for your future, um, for things that you want to do from a creative standpoint. What do you want to create? What would you love to create within five years? You might get some good ideas on that. And if you've got kids, you might be able to see ahead for them too. You might get insights into their future as well. So that's something to bear in mind at that time, mid-month onwards. Then we've got 9th Feb, new moon, Capricorn, Danish Nakshatra happening in your fourth house. So this is great energy to wish for a new home or for home improvements. 
and it's a really good day for clutter clearing as well we've got a new moon here we've got Mars exalted here don't we we do and so this is a good time to do something and for you clutter clearing is the thing if you can just get rid of stuff if you haven't used it for a long time and you know you're not going to use it get rid of it it's weighing you down okay let's take a look at the 24th of Feb we've got a full moon in Leo Maga Nakshatra in your 11th house so you can gain insights ideas and downloads that will help you bring in more income oh and we've got that announcement thing happening did we have that in I think it was Leo had that hmm some fame 11th house that's fame yeah it's an air house oh, some fame for somebody perhaps uh, but yeah you can definitely gain insights ideas and downloads that will help you bring in more income this is long-term visionary energy which will help you take more control of your life Libra it's looking like a good month ahead I am wishing you well we are now going to welcome Scorpio Scorpio welcome thank you so much for joining so this is for Scorpio ascendant Scorpio Sun or Scorpio moon as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology I just quoted the Sun above the moon that's quite interesting I normally quote the moon first because that is really you definitely want to check out your ascendant you definitely want to see your moon and if you can watch your Sun do that anyway Scorpio let's take a look so from 5th Feb to 15th March you've got Mars exalted in your third house oh this is so beautiful big 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 powerhouse energy I'm excited for you Scorpio I've got here like Leo you are extremely lucky this is excellent energy to be productive and to get ahead it's a great time to be seen it's a great time where efforts should pay off uh, either in the near or long-term future but this is your efforts the efforts that you put in across this time from 5th Feb to 15th March the effort that you put in it's going to pay off okay this is so definitely if there's a time this year to put in effort do it do it now 5th Feb to 15th March uh, mid month onwards we've got Saturn Sun and Mercury in Aquarius in your fourth house so this is visionary energy for your home for your car for your stuff for the things that you own for the things that make you comfortable in life there's a good time to think about what long-term changes you might want to make to the way that you live can you organize yourself better can you change something can you renovate something can you improve something can you add something you know um, this is a time to be thinking about that maybe you're gonna buy a car save up for one now 9th Feb we've got a new moon Capricorn Danisha Nakshatra happening in your third house so this is a great time to start a new project definitely it's a great time to wish for progress in life or your career wish for energy wish for great energy wish for a clear and focused mind we've got the third house here we've got your mind wish for it to be clear and focused when you are clear and focused it's so easy to get your work done your work gets done in a quarter of the time when you, your mind is crystal clear and just focused and free when your mind is free of emotions and thoughts this is what I'm finding when my mind is free of emotions and thoughts and stories and beliefs and when my mind is free of all of that uh, I am yeah the pr productivity goes up and it's easy it's easy to be productive so I've got for here wish like on 9th Feb new moon you can wish for something so I've got here wish for energy wish that you can output a lot wish that you can do a lot so that you can enjoy a lot you can rest a lot you can be with your family a lot you know don't forget that we're not just here to work now 24th Feb we've got a full moon happening in Leo Maga Nakshatra in your 10th house so this is a time where there could be insights ideas downloads that are going to help you in your career but specifically things that will help you get to the top now I've been thinking about this and it's that Pareto principle thing of you know it's um, the 80 20 rule so it's 20% of the effort will give you 80% of the results 
and I went to a business seminar and the guy gave these other random examples. He said, when you look at your house, 20% of the carpets get 80% of the wear. Isn't it true? And he said things like your wardrobe, 20% of the outfits will get 80% of the wear. That can be true for some people, but yeah, I, when I became conscious of that, I was like, oh yeah, I better start wearing my other things. Well, actually on this trip, I have been wearing other things. I haven't worn this dress for like 10 years or something crazy. Anyway, um, specifically, yeah, what are the things that are gonna help you get to the top? Remember, it's 20% of the effort that is going to give you 80% of the results. So what is that 20%? And on the 24th Feb full moon, you might be able to see very clearly what is that 20%. Scorpio, I'm wishing you well. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are now gonna welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon, or Sagittarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 15th of Feb to 15th March, we've got Mars exalted in your second house. So this is really powerful energy that could impact your spending. And it's very loud energy. I don't know if you can hear that cockatoo, I think it is. They get really noisy around dusk and in the evening. Sometimes they have fights before they go to sleep. Well, I think it's fights, but my mum thinks they're telling each other jokes. I don't know, it sounds pretty angry to me. All right, well anyway, um, but that's interesting. We're talking about the second house here and we're talking about Mars exalted. And it could be that, because this could be to do with your family of origin. And if you're at home with your people, your family of origin people, or you're communicating with them or something like that, yeah, there could be arguments. It could be humor, but it doesn't go well. Look at that, that could be interesting. Because the guidance here for Mars passing through the second house is be careful how you talk to your family members. That's the classic advice. So that is quite interesting here. But I was talking about powerful energy that could impact your spending. That's where this sentence was going. Apologies if it's been a bit choppy and stop start here, Sagittarius. I'm being thrown by the birds, that's what it is. Um, you might be distracted. Sagittarius, that is a possibility. You might be easily distracted this month, but let's get back here. So I've got here powerful energy that can impact your spending. Second house, second house is money, it is wealth. So some of you might spend more, um, but equally some of you might be really frugal at this time. Sometimes I've seen Mars in the second. Sometimes when those people have it in the birth chart, they can be very tight with their money. That is a possibility sometimes. I've got here, yeah, be careful in relationships with family and how you speak, definitely. And there could be something around, is it an argument? Was it a joke? Something like that, interesting. Now mid-month onwards, we've got Saturn, Sun and Mercury in Aquarius in your third house. So this is superb energy to be seen at work and to be strategizing long-term plans for several years into the future. We've got some visionary energy here. You can really look far. Okay, we've got Saturn, Sun, and Mercury. When these three get together, you become a bit of a visionary. You can literally see, when you've got this in your birth chart, you can see many years into the future and you can do it on behalf of others and things like that. Uh, let's have a look here. I've got here, what do you really want to create in life? Map this out now and put those dreams and goals on paper just to get them out of your system. And it doesn't mean that you have to achieve them. Don't forget, we grow and change over time. And so our goals and dreams and all of that changes over time too. So as a form of pressure release, just put your visions and goals and dreams on paper, just to feel like, oh good, the paper's holding it for me. I don't have to hold it. Now on the 9th of Feb, we've got a new moon in Capricorn, Dhanish and Akshatra, happening in your second house. So this is a great time to do something with the family, great time to do something home related. Maybe you're just cooking up a delicious meal. It's a great time to wish for inspiration on how to create the big money in your life or how to create the big savings or how to create that big asset that's just gonna feed you for a long time to come. It's gonna feed you and your family, Taurus. Now, on the 24th of Feb, we have a full moon in Leo, Marga Nakshatra, in your ninth house. 
So your own power and authority could be illuminated at this time. It's a good time to see how far you've come, a good time to acknowledge that, a good time to just say, you know what, I have done a lot. Could be a good time to take some rest as well. I've got here insights or visions on what to study next. Um, could be, you could, you could see that at this time. Um, you know, insights, downloads, ideas on what you'd like to study next. Also, you might, um, you might be contemplating who you'd like as a guru. This could also be the time for you to step up and teach something as well or to contemplate and consider doing that. I know a lot of people have reluctance on uh, like overtaking the mantle uh, or the title of teacher and um, yeah maybe it's time that you do that Sagittarius. So don't be so hard on yourself is what I want to say. I always have this thing that oh I'm not a teacher and all this kind of thing but yeah, I'm starting to relax about that now, <laughs> especially as I'm writing my book. I am putting my book together. It's a slow process, going to take at least a year, at least a year, a year and a half, I don't know. All right, Sagittarius, well, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Capricorn. And Sagittarius, look, it look, it's looking fantastic for you. I mean, you've got Saturn in your third there. Keep enjoying that energy. You've got a good long time with that. All right, we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now from the 5th of Feb to 15th March, we've got Mars exalted in your first house. For you, this could be mixed energy actually because this could be really strong energy and it could be tiring. Okay, so for some of you, it could be tiring. For some of you, at times, it could be energizing. Could be a bit of both. You might find that, yeah, sometimes... Uh, I've got energy sometimes I'm just burnt out that's a possibility got here you might even be inspired to start a new fitness routine I know I have recently started one um, we got a rebounder a little mini trampoline thing at my house because we've been watching a lot of Barbara O'Neill I'll put Barbara O'Neill her name on the screen and um, yeah we've been watching, watching a lot of Barbara and she recommends the rebounder and so I've been doing that it is so much fun it is, I wake up in the morning and I jump for joy. It's fantastic. So see if you want to do that too. It is a great exercise. In fact, what I'll do Capricorn is I'll put a link below and you can check that out. This is an exclusive just for Capricorns. I'll put a link for her, I think it's called HIIT exercise video or something like that. Well, I have been doing that and it's a lot of fun. I'm like three days into it. <laughs> so yeah. Um, it's something new for me but yeah I mean you might be inspired to start a new fitness routine or if you've dropped off a fitness routine I was doing the Tibetan yoga and yeah I don't know it just didn't it doesn't stick with me I just don't keep doing it and so now I've got this new thing let's see how long this goes for I don't know <laughs> anyway uh, I've got here be gradual remember it's the daily part that counts more yes and I think that's very true that's very Saturnian you're a Capricorn I mean look with exercise it's the daily part that counts so don't worry how long I mean I, I spend I do the 10 minute routine that Barbara teaches you know I don't do anything long and I figure as long as if I can commit to that every day for a long time that's going to be good so yeah when I go back to England I'll have to get a rebounder anyway there's a whole thing there I, I don't know you don't have to buy anything that's the other thing like I am not into gym memberships or buying equipment or any of that this is rare this is like the first time in my life I've oh okay I, I did buy some hand weights I have that at home too but I'm not into spending money on fitness so please don't think I'm suggesting spending money but do check out the um, Barbara's video and the rebounders they are pretty affordable you can get um, cheap ones as well which is what we did all right mid-month onwards we've got Saturn Sun and Mercury in Aquarius in your second house so you're building up strength Capricorn it's okay take time no rush build up the strength now you're building up slowly slowly okay it's it's taking time but that's all right so you're building up strength you're building up money you're building up resources you're building up now um, Sun and Mercury will help put focus on this and it's a good time to use Mercury to get up to dates up to date on your accounts 
or your finances or that kind of thing you know make sure you pay off your credit card bill update your expenses if you're self-employed whatever you have to do now 9th of Feb we have a new moon Capricorn Dhanishtha Nakshatra in your first house so do something for yourself on this day do something that's going to make you happy just do something that's fun and wish for whatever you want at this time uh, I've got here note how your dreams have changed over time yeah there's all this visionary energy about in Feb and I'm saying to a lot of signs that put your dreams and goals on paper and then just do the little steps each day don't worry about the big plan have it written somewhere and the other thing is that you will grow and change over time so don't feel like you have to achieve all your goals that you know I've put it on paper I better achieve it now it's okay it's all right if you don't you know just just uh, yeah the thing everything changes change is the only constant in life and if you're changing that's good I think I tend to think that people who are stuck in life that's that's where it's not good you want to you want to like change if you want to have a good life I think um, it's stuck places in ourselves uh, that can cause the difficulties so if you're very stuck then that that you got to change that uh, you got to get unstuck and that could be people around you so if that's the case you've got to detach from from wanting them to get unstuck and that's hard to do I know but there'll be some detachment that will help free you and I find what I find within myself is the detachment work I need to do is detaching from thoughts or feelings and that's it once I've done that I'm very free so yeah all right let's take a look at uh, 24th Feb full moon we've got here Leo Maga Nakshatra and it's happening in your eighth house so you might gain powerful long-term insights into the people around you okay that's without them saying anything and this this could be to do with in-laws this could be to do with family this could be to do with your married the, the person you're married to and you're going to gain some powerful long-term insights that are going to help you to plan and strategize your life going forward and hopefully get you to be more free just feeling more free within yourself to be yourself that's it nothing in the outer needs to change but if if you do the internal work you'll be free wherever you are Capricorn I want to thank you so much for tuning in we are now going to welcome Aquarius Aquarius welcome thank you so much for joining this is Aquarius ascendant Aquarius moon or Aquarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so from the 5th of Feb to the 15th of March we've got Mars exalted in your 12th house so you might be feeling restless and this is really good energy to channel into gentle exercise you might want to try some qigong you might want to try some martial arts or some yoga or you might even want to try some rebounder exercises guys I just mentioned to Capricorn I thought I was giving them a juicy exclusive I thought I was saying to them oh, I'm giving you a secret little link but I'll give it to you as well Aquarius check out the link below Barbara O'Neill has done a really good video on I think it's called HIIT it's some high intensity exercise thing and she says that yeah get a rebounder and that's a really good form of exercise to do and just recently I got one and I'm loving it so I joke with myself I'm like every morning I wake up and I jump for joy I've only been doing it like two three days but I'm hoping to keep it going this might be my exercise I don't know I was on the Tibetan yoga for a long time but I just I don't know I'm kind of bored of it now I feel like I need something new anyway you might want to try and I'm not saying that you have to buy something um, in order to do your exercises I don't believe in gym memberships and buying gear or equipment or I believe in doing it for free but which is what I've done on my life um, but sometimes it can be hard to stay motivated I know I tend to drop off like I'll, I'll do a few weeks and I'll be like oh I drop off and things like that um, now it could be from 5th Feb to 15th Mar March that you're looking into exercise could be that or you could be getting a chanting practice going or you could be getting a medita a meditation practice going again as well so that could be something that you're putting in place 
that would be really good at this time because that will use that restless Mars energy uh, in a really good way. Now mid-month onwards we've got Saturn, Sun and Mercury in Aquarius in your first house. So this is a key month for visualizing the long-term future ahead. Where do you see yourself in five years time? And it's a good time to note down insights, ideas, inspiration or guidance that comes your way. This is really important for you Aquarius because this is happening in your sign. Sun and Mercury are stepping in and they're illuminating the future somehow. Because you've got Saturn there who's doing some long-term work for you. I mean possibly setting up a new 30-year cycle depending on uh, you know I mean depending on a few things I'd want to see your chart but but besides that I mean Saturn is, is thinking very long term here in Aquarius this is impacting you and this is a time where you can intuit for yourself what's coming in the long term future I think you're going to get some ideas on this and you might want to write them down at this time now on the 9th of Feb we've got a new moon in Capricorn Dhanisha Nakshatra happening in your 12th house. So this is a good time to wish for spiritual growth or for your intuition to grow. Also you can note down dreams at this time. You can see what insights, downloads and guidance naturally occurs at this time. And then on the 24th of Feb we've got a full moon in Leo Maga Nakshatra happening in your 7th house. So something in your marriage or your relationship with your significant other, something could come to a close at this time. Uh, I'm not saying close of a relationship, I'm saying close of a dynamic or a pattern, something that you grow beyond and it just doesn't bother you anymore. You're just okay. They're the same, but you have expanded. You have become more illuminated. You are more filled with light. It's a full moon. You're gonna see something and just be okay. And you'll be able to let them be themselves and you'll be able to be yourself. So yeah, I've got here, you might graduate from something that bothered you before. You might become free of that. Aquarius, I wanna thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now gonna welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So this is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon or Pisces Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. I'm just checking on the time, we're okay. And also, I'm just checking on the surroundings. You can still see me, it's all good. I was gonna use my little DJI, I'll just show you, Pisces. Look at this, I've got, I've got a new camera and I haven't used it, it's so tiny. I'm gonna use it, I am gonna use it to do like little shorts videos and things like that. I was gonna use it today, but then I thought, no, I'll just stick to the thing I know keep it the same keep it keep it all working but yeah look out for my shorts I am going to do it see now that I've told everyone I have to do it now <sighs> it's just been about finding the time I have been busy I have been writing so that is why yeah I just haven't, haven't had time anyway uh, let's have a look here Pisces what we got going on right from the 5th of Feb to the 15th of March we've got Mars exalted in your 11th house so this is superb energy to achieve things, to get things done. Pisces, this is great energy, okay? I know that Pisces moon, you're inside Isati and all that kind of thing, but uh, don't worry about that. Focus in on Mars here because you're one of the lucky three signs that's getting an excellent run with Mars. Scorpio and Leo are also getting a terrific run here with Mars and so are you. So. I've got here, this is superb energy to achieve things, to get things done. You can expand your work, you can be seen, you can network with people, you can grow at this time. It's time to profit from your effort. Okay, so this could also be, um, you know, you're collecting possibly some profit or reward for, for what you've done in the past. Now mid-month onwards, we've got Saturn, Sun and Mercury in Aquarius in your 12th house. So you might gain insights and ideas on how to save more money, how to reduce expenditures. Um, you might also gain health insights as well. 
And it's amazing how one simple switch can improve your whole life. And I'll give you an example of a simple switch that I did. This was a long time ago. I used to spend a lot of money on like face creams and all that kind of thing. And um, th this was ages ago because my mum, when she would look after my dad, my dad had this problem with his hand. And anyway, she put castor oil on his hand and it healed miraculously. And this was like more than 10 years ago, I think. And when I heard that, I thought, I'm going to use, I'm going to dump all the face creams or whatever. And every day I'm just going to use castor oil, pure castor oil on my face. And that is what I have done. And it has been such a good thing for me. Like, um, I've been doing it for ages. And one of the things that I do, I mean, I did have a lot of acne and problems with my face. So it's quite a bit of the spots and problems have cleared up due to the castor oil. But I'll tell you what it's done for me, I think. I think it's helped my eyesight quite a bit because um, I don't need like glasses for close-up stuff or any of that but I mean yeah touch wood I mean I don't know like that that is a natural function of aging as well so it could happen but I, I don't know like I think it's the castor oil that's helping keep my eyes good and strong I do need like if if I um, look at a blackboard far away I need the glasses for that or if I'm driving or something like that I do wear glasses for that but um, otherwise, I don't need glasses. Let's see. I think it's to do with the castor oil. But yeah, I am going to look at doing eye exercises as well to keep my vision strong. Uh, this could be relevant to someone here. 12th house, 12th house, 1st house, 2nd house. We can be looking at vision here. Sometimes ninth house as well can be a vision thing as well, um, which is quite interesting. But yeah, so, but I've got here one simple switch can improve your whole life. This is the health insights thing. This is th that visionary energy of Saturn with Sun and Mercury. And that's happening opposite your sixth house. That's why I'm bringing up the health stuff here. But this is like, this is strategic. So it's, and it's like me making a switch from, I'm going to dump the face creams and I'm going to go for castor oil on my face. That was something that honestly, when I, once I did that, that changed for my whole life. Yeah, I haven't used those face creams um, for ages. Okay, so let's have a look here. But then like if I do like a video or something like this, I do put on like a little bit of just powder and a bit of blush. So before that I will use like a store-bought moisturizer. So I do use a moisturizer maybe once a week if I'm making a video once a week or something like that. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> what else have I got here? 9th of Feb, we've got a new moon, Capricorn, Danishtha Nakshatra, in your 11th house this is happening, a new moon. So this is a great time to start a new project, um, great time to socialize, great time to wish for more soul tribe people to come into your life as well. And it's a great time to wish for more belonging in the world. We've got the 11th house here, 11th house Aquarius, this is all about, it is about belonging. You know, and um, you know, yes, we can have more soul tribe people. That's nice. That's wonderful. But equally, we can just feel that we belong. How about that? You know, um, and you can wish to have more of a feeling uh, that you that you belong here. For that to deepen here on that new moon, 9th Feb, and then on the twenty fourth of Feb, we have a full moon in Leo Maga Nakshatra happening in your sixth house. So something at work might come full circle. Equally, something in a court case or in an area where you are competing, something might come full circle, something might complete, something might close out. And you might get inspiration here on how to compete more successfully in the long term. Uh, and you might gain more confidence when it comes to competition. You might gain more of a feeling of relaxation that, yeah, it's all right to look at the competitors and I won't be intimidated or, you know, I won't look at them and think, oh no, I don't know enough or whatever it is. Like you might find that that energy starts to relax where you just become more free and more able to look at what others are doing. Um, and, but equally to offer what you have to offer which is going to be unique, right? So, you know, this is the thing. Some people say, oh, what can I contribute? Some people say, what can I contribute? You know, everyone's doing that. Or there's so many who are already doing that. Yeah, but no one's going to do it like how you do it. You're unique. You really are. 
And you've just got to embrace that and remember that, that no one's going to do it the way you do it. And people, what people are going to remember um, about the experience of whatever it is that you do. So I'm thinking filmmakers, I'm thinking light workers, I'm thinking even if you're accountant, whatever it is that you do, yes, there are others who do it, but what people are going to remember, they're going to remember you, they're going to remember your energy. And I was thinking about this the other day about creativity and, and we've got all the Pisces here, so I might as well talk about creativity. I know you guys are all very creative and you've all got incredible side projects going or your main work is amazingly creative. But yeah, I was thinking about creativity and what is creativity and creativity, I was thinking about this the other day, is just a way of sharing your love, what love you have, or it's a way of you sharing your happiness, or it's a way of sharing your vibe or who you are or your uniqueness. That's all creativity is. It doesn't matter what the modality is or what the tools are that you use or how you do your creativity. I think the point of it is just sharing uh, a bit of yourself you know that's that's all it is guys I'm gonna wrap up now because it's starting to get late and I want to thank you so much for tuning in let me know how you get on with this video in the comments below I would love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you next time